Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of unbridled imagination. You know, man is a curious creature. Most of us settle for routine and habit. Eight hours on the job, another seven or eight in bed, and the other eight on some hobby that is neither too physically demanding nor asks for too many mental gymnastics. Few of us stretch ourselves beyond a reasonable limit. We coast through life. Our metal never really tried. But some of us, through harrowing experience, are stretched to the full capacity of our beings. It's then we find out what fiber we are made of. David! David! Help me! Eve, what is it? What is she? Help me! under the arch there. Did you see anything? No, but you heard Eve. It's true. There is a thing that lives in these caves. And we're trapped. Trapped here. And it's mercy. Our mystery drama, The Thing in the Cave, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Terry Keene and Marion Seldes. I don't suppose many of us ever plan to grow up to be speleologists since most of us are subject to claustrophobia to at least some degree. For the very few of you who don't recognize the Latin term, let me add that a speleologist, of course, is someone who studies and explores caves. And claustrophobia is that suffocating, pervasive dread of being shut in. This tale concerns itself with four young spelunkers. Those are cave explorers who do it only for fun. And their gruesome experience of being cave-bound literally buried alive. It's just around the next bend in the trail, Hank. It's funny being born and bred in these mountains, and yet I've never been inside Choctaw Cave. Well, I'm not sure I want to myself. <laughs> you get claustrophobia too, Barbara. David, I never even dare close the door in a phone booth. Darling. Yes, Eve? We can forget all this, you know. I don't have to have my childhood revisited. No, thanks. Right on. If I refused you this little memory trip, I'd hear about it for the rest of our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever decide to go through with the wedding. Oh, yeah. just you try to leave me at the altar, David Tower. Well, here we are. <laughs> are we here? Yes, sir, General Custer. Cavalry did No. Oh, I don't see any cave. It's right behind that scrub oak there. Listen, what do we do about the horses? Oh, here. I'll hitch us all to the aspen here. My old baldy, all I got to do is let the reins trail. <laughs> he won't budge more than 20 feet till I get back. Hey, you know, it's kind of clouding up over in the northwest. Maybe we ought to be getting back down the mountain. Ah, oh, come on, give Eve her kicks. <laughs> What's this? Oh, just my old faithful knapsack with some of the remains of lunch and a flashlight. Ah, uh, meet an old boy scout. Be prepared. I brought a water bottle, too. Hey, come to think of it, if Eve wants to get up to the ledge, which she says goes to the back cavern, we ought to bring along a rope. Uh, fetch my lariat, too, while you're at it. Will do. Where are you fellas? Come on. Bobby and I have found the entrance to the cave. <laughs> When I was a kid. Barbara and I can make it all mm. right. Crawling, but <laughs> it comes in the giant size. Hank, can you make it? It's just about as tight as a cork in a bottle. <laughs> if I get stuck, you can be sorry if this is the only way in and out. With just a moment, we can all stand up. You'll see. Maybe we should all forget it. 
You scared? Uh, no, but I'm not exactly happy either. I don't know if... Hank, Jen... We're here. In the cave. I can stand up. Oh, come on, everyone. It's just beautiful. It's just as I remembered it. You're right, Eve. It's breathtaking. Like a cathedral buried at the bottom of the sea. Oh, hey. Oh, green, like Saint Chapelle in Paris. Saint How in Paris? Oh, it's a marvelous chapel near Notre Dame with all stained glass windows that make you feel as if you're scuba diving and looking at it through water. Hey, I can hear water, too. Somewhere. Come on. I'll show you where. Listen, look out for the, uh, what do you call them? Stalactites, if they hang from the roof. Oh, and the ones from the floor are stalagmites, all right? right? Here it is. Here's the waterfall. Oh, Oh, that's beautiful. But where does the food drain? Well, nobody knows. But some say it's bottomless and it goes right through the earth. Well, where does the river that makes the waterfall come from? Up there? Well, the kids I used to know climbed up to the ledge there and then went in through the cleft. They say it comes from another chamber behind this. Where it comes from before that, I guess nobody knows. I'm crazy. Oh, but it's such fun to remember how we kids used to come here together and <laughs> talk about the thing. The thing? Well, what was the thing? Oh, it was just something we made up, some country legend someone had heard about this, this creature, this monster that lived in an underground river, whatever it is. What kind of monster? Well, you know, I mean, the three and all the blob. It was one... Great red rimmed eye and long, <laughs> oh. snaky tentacles that crept and crawled along the rock yeah. until suddenly they bounced. What was that? It uh, sounded like thunder. I bet that storm broke outside. Come on. We, we better get going. Oh, just wanted to get into the cave behind us where we are. Just once again. Oh, no, count me out. This place is giving me the heebie jeebies. Yeah, I'm getting a little tight in the throat myself. Come on, darling. You're right, David. This must have been a little crazy. I don't know what it was, but something seemed to draw me here. Almost as if it was something calling. Come on, Eve. Run! lose our heads. It's so dark. It's so pitch dark. What happened to Hank and David? They've gone to see about clearing the entrance. If we only had some light. The boys had the only flashlight. But... Wait a minute. What is it? Is it the... Is no, it the... No, no, cool it. Cool it, Eve. Just Hank and Dave coming back with the light. Oh. Any luck? You both all right? We'll make it. How's Eve? Oh, I'm okay, David. Can we go now? Well, this isn't going to be that easy. Well, can't we help to clear? Eve, uh, Barbara, I, I, I don't know. The, the landslide we heard, it may have covered over the cave entrance outside. You mean that even if people came looking for us, they might not be able to find the entrance to the cave? But that's why we have to start clearing out from inside here. Eve. Well, what is it? I mean, at least we know where the way out is. We can crawl back through the tunnel, Eve, and then we'll... we don't know where the way out is anymore. What do you mean? The whole area where we passed along the stalactites and the stalagmites has collapsed. Even if we could guess where the tunnel going out began, the rocks blocking it are so large, it would take a bulldozer to move them. Oh, good Lord. Then we're trapped. We're sealed in like a tomb. And it's all my fault. Oh, it's all my fault. Oh, come on, darling, baby. Hey, let me go, boy. Stop it. Stop it. Take it easy, Barbara. Now, Eve, come on. You've got to get a hold of yourself. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm sure you will. Hank, have you any ideas what we can do? Well, I, I guess the first thing to do is not to panic. Now, we've got water. I... I've got some chocolate bars and a couple of sandwiches left over from lunch in my saddlebag. 
We've got light as long as the batteries last, which reminds me. Do we have to be in the dark? Well, there's no sense in using up the batteries when we don't need it. David. Right here, Eve. Hank, what are our chances of being found? Oh, it's hard to answer, Barbara. Of course, they'll miss us back at the ranch by tonight. Oh, we didn't say where we were going. But when they find the horses hitched right outside... It's well, always supposing they weren't buried in the landslide. Uh, is there any other way out of the cave you know of, Eve? No, not really. Like I told you, some kids got up on the ledge at the top of the waterfall, and they, they went into some kind of a chamber behind there. But they claimed that... That what? Eve, please, we've all got to keep our heads. Well, it, just that... That the thing came rising out of the water, hissing and snarling, so they, they just took up and ran. Well, I don't guess four of us grown-ups, as long as we stick together, are going to dream up any boogeyman out of the shadows. I've got to turn the light on for a minute. Twenty after four... They won't miss us till dinner time. By the time they started any kind of search, it'll be dark. Yeah, and with the thunderstorm and the Dakota River running high as it does at the Ford, they may figure we hold up at Halfway House. That's this side of the river? Yes, and there's no phone, right, Hank? That's right. Look, it's it's only about 20 feet up to that ledge. It'd be easy to climb. Dave and me could go in through that cleft and have a look around. Maybe there's a way out that way. You girls wait here. Oh, no way. I'm not sitting around in the dark. We'll all go, Hank. Well, okay. You climb first, then. David, right behind you. Then Barb, and I'll come up last. Let's go. Bingo. We're in the second cavern. How big is it? This must be where the waterfall comes from. Is there any way out? Hold it, everyone. Hold it. Let's see. Let's start to the left here. The walls are so smooth, like they've been polished. Once upon a time, I guess the whole floor was underwater. Shine the light higher, Hank, so we can... Let's see. If there was any clefts or passageways at ground level first. But it's so small. You're over halfway around and nothing. Maybe where the water comes in? <laughs> we'll be there in a minute. Nope. Try along the right-hand wall. The water runs along against it. And back through a hole in the floor, down to where we came from. Shine the light back again where the water comes in. Why? The batteries are getting dim. Thought I saw something. Wait a minute. You may be right. The water doesn't come quite to the top of the archway. It isn't that. It's something else. It's calling me. Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, Hank. Oh. Are you all right? Damn, I turned my ankle. David, the flashlight. I know. I'm, I'm looking for it. David! David, help me. What is it? Where are you? Stop me. Where is it? Stop me. Where's the damn light? I have it, right? Holy me, I'm dead. What is it? What is it? Where's the police? I'm dead. Where's the police? only a couple of inches under the roof. Hank's gone. He thinks it's the thing again. And he's coming back for all of us. From ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, good Lord deliver us. The quote is from an old friend, Anon or, to give him his full name, Anonymous. But will he deliver our four young spelunkers, or any of them, from this thing that haunts the cave? I'll return in a moment with Act Two. creepy, crawly feeling about the very thought of being shut in anywhere without doors or windows. Confinement 
sense of any kind is as foreign to the human animal as it is to his fellow beasts. And as for caves, I know I wouldn't be found dead in one. Oh. I hope that figure of speech isn't a prophetic one for one of our four young friends who are cave-bound. What was that? Column of water. I, I don't know. But didn't you see something inside it with great arms reaching out like a tree? It was just a geyser, a water spout, some freak of nature. Eve said there was a thing. Oh, what does it matter? Eve's gone. She's dead, drowned. And it's my fault. And Hank hasn't come back either. Uh, David, you can't help it if you can't swim. <laughs> hasn't helped Hank that he could. He's disappeared. She was my girl. If anyone had to die with her, it should have been me. Maybe they've gotten to another cave. If they hadn't, their bodies would have come up to the surface. Look at that vortex there, Barbara. Where the spout or whatever it is came from. Just before the archway. Bends like a whirlpool. It could have sucked them both down to the bowels of the earth. Oh, David, what are we going to do? I don't care anymore. Well, I do. Give me that flashlight. It's getting dimmer. Maybe there's a hole or passage higher up that must... What's that? Back. The lights to them. Put it out. No, I can't. I can't. I don't want to be in the dark with them. We'll have them all over us. Ah! One brush against me. Please, please, help me. Please. Please, help me. Help, help me. Oh. Take it easy, Eve. You're, you're all right. You'll be all right. And the thing... The thing that pulled me out of the water. You're out of the water now. Where? I don't know. Dry land, anyway. Hank. Yes. How did you get here? I went into the water. Try to save me? Oh, it's an Eagle Scout. You know, trustworthy, loyal, helpful. What about David? He can't swim. Oh, but what did you... How did you... I don't think I could explain. What do you mean? It just doesn't make sense. The stream was flowing out of the arch. So I was swimming against it. But suddenly, something... Something just pulled me along against the current. What about you? Oh, don't you see? It was him. The thing. Oh, if it was, why did he save you and me? You thought he wanted to drown you. Yes, I, I did at first. But then, then it seemed so kind. So kind. As if it wanted to help. But Barbara and David. We've got to find... We've got to get back. Take it easy. Too tired. Oh, we have some lights that we take and... They're nothing but matches. Soaking wet. Maybe dry out. It... Yeah. Can't even see this time. <laughs> Barbara. Would the light disturb the bats again? They make my flesh crawl, but anything's better than the dark. Well, it must be night outside by now. I, I have a hunch they're taken off of the outside cavern. Well, are they in for a surprise when they find there's no exit anymore? Maybe they know the one out of here. Let's, let's try. So far, so good. It's getting so dim. It isn't all that high. Let, let's see. Well... Can you see anything? No. It's like the inside of an egg. Oh, David, what are we going to do? Get back. Get back near the arch. The rock's flat. Maybe if the water goes down or something, we can figure a way... <clears throat> Battery's gone. Oh, no. No, there's got to be light. David, I can't take it. Father. I'm joking. Father. I'm joking. <laughs> Hold it. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, thank God. Some light. It's only a lighter. It won't last long. Now we've got to say to sit down. You just don't turn it off. I have to. Just keep thinking it's there if it's needed. It's there if it's needed. Oh, David, hold me. 
Julie. Okay, okay. Oh, Hank, I got you, all of you, into this. But Eve, Eve, that won't help. What we need to do is move around and try to get warm. Oh, at least we're dry. Yeah. Try those matches again. Oh, no, no good. Well, if only we could see to... What is it? Look up, Eve. What? Way, way up there. What do you see? It's... It's a shaft of light. Sunlight that's coming from outside. It means there's a way out. But it's so high up. It's so little. With any luck as the sun rises, it'll give us more light. Then we can explore. How far up to where that light's coming in? Oh, it must be a good 60 feet. It's hard to tell in this light. Could we climb up there? Oh, Lord, no. We've got to think about Bob and David first, anyway. Oh, I've been thinking about that. Trouble is, I was groggy when I fetched the shore here. I have no idea how long the underwater swim is. But with the current going with you... Oh, there's a good chance I could make it through, but making it back's another problem. Especially since David doesn't swim. We can't count on Mr. Singh to be around to help us out again. But here, we have a chance. And there, they don't. There's got to be some way. I've got a notion. Eve, you got anything to write with? No, I haven't got a pocketbook or any kind of pen. Wait a minute. Pocket of my jeans. Lipstick, any good? Famous. Now look, I'm going to take my canteen and empty it. Now, the one sure thing we have is plenty of water. <laughs> you think we could write a message with lipstick on that? No, not so good on that canvas cover. But if we if we just strip it, we, we could write on the metal. You don't think water would wash it off? I don't suppose you've done much dishwashing. Well, even a bachelor does his share. Well, then you know how tough it is to get lipstick off a glass. I sure do. But how do we get this message? Look, with the stopper in this canteen, it won't sink. Now, I'm going to tie it to the end of the rope and let it float on down far as I can. Supposing the rope isn't long enough. Oh, there's 30 to 35 feet of rope here. It better be long enough. Now, let's put our heads together and figure how much of a message we can get on this canteen. David? Yes, Bob? Is it me? Or is it getting hard to breathe in here? It's all in the mind. You know, it's funny. What? I used to be kind of jealous of all the big brains. Me, I was just, uh, you know, fun and games and the action girl. And no ties, strictly let it all hang out loose. I wish I had the chance to find just, just one fellow. Who, oh, Davis? What, Barbie? You're not kidding me. The air's getting heavier and heavier. Please, can't we have a little light? There's not much light if you... What is it? There's something floating in the stream. Here. Hold this up for me. Uh, can you reach it? Yeah, I have it. What is it? It's, it's a canteen. It's tied to a rope. Looks like Hank's canteen. The water bottle. He, he brought in without the cover. Hold it closer. Oh, look. There's writing on it. Oh, God, I'm blind without my glasses. It's a lipstick. <laughs> that means Eve. Here, can you read it? Hold the flame steady. Okay. Eve, Hank, safe, oh. hug, rope, three times if found, way out. Oh. If writing materials reply, send all in flask. <laughs> How much do you measure? About 20 feet. And how far can Wait. we... Wait. One, two, three. They've got it. Now all we have to do is wait for one tug, and we can bring back the message. There's so much more we should have told them. Not the time. The light is almost out of fluid. Thank God my watch has an illuminated dial. 
if we miss their return instructions, well, well, we can't, that's all. Hold the lighter. I've got to be sure this bottle's tight to Captain. Okay. Here goes. One tug and Geronimo to the light. Oh, if I ever get out of here, I'll write for special dispensation during the energy crisis. I never want to spend another moment in the dark again. What does it say? Oh, we could use a better reading light. What's it written on? Pencil on a handkerchief. Dearest Eve Hank, light only for one more message from you. Air supply failing. Trapped here. Give instructions. Expect answer five minutes. Pencil enclosed. Can you imagine? The 20th century, a little less than 20 feet away, and we communicate like the Stone Age. Never mind. At least we communicate. Let's just get them here so we can communicate face to face. It's silly, Dave. You know you can't swim. If anything goes wrong and you panic, I'll at least be here. And if I leave you here in the dark, alone... I... Now, look, let me slip the rope around your shoulders like Hank instructed. I, I know how to handle a sling like this. Uh, will you remember? Yes. Now, go on. Get in and tug. Let's get out of here before my lighter gives out. Oh, oh. It's nothing. I could have swum it alone. <laughs> I didn't hold my breath more than half a minute. Oh, Bobby, it's so good to see you again. <laughs> Let's get that sling off and float it back on the bottom oh, of the David. Hurry, hurry. You think you'll be able to manage? Oh, sure. I think. Oh, here you are, Hank. Oh, I just hope your boyfriend isn't jealous. You mean the thing? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20... 21. It should be right on the mark now. What's the matter? Haven't he tugged yet? Give him a chance. I hope the lighter hasn't run out of fuel. But if he can't see, then how can it get... Watch it. There's the tug. Come on. Let's go. Pull fast. Should have come as easy as that. Something's wrong. He's lost the rope. He's lost the rope, all right. But it's something worse than that. Once again, some malign influence interferes in the tantalizing possibility of escape for the four young people whose metal has already been tested unbearably. And for the lovers, the tables are bitterly turned. It seems that it is Eve's turn to mourn David. We'll return shortly with Act Three. Instead of David appearing from the tunnel, secure on the rope, there is an empty sling tied to the canteen for a float. And behind it, a boiling spout of frothing water spewing from the narrow opening of the channel like a huge fire hose, reversing the normal current till the opposing forces drive a seething lake over the floor of the cavern. Hank! Hank, what happened? I don't know. It's that, that thing David and I thought after you went in to save Eve. David said it was some sort of a, a water spout, a, a, a geyser. Or... Look! What? Floating in. <laughs> David, oh. help me. Help me. Right with you. Easy. Eve, let me get him. Don't let him go. It's all right. The water's washing him ashore. Is he? He swallowed a lot of water. Let an R.N. and an old lifeguard handle this one. Get him on his back, Hank. Here. Yeah. That's right. Now, help me pull his jaw forward. What's that for? Free his tongue so he doesn't strangle. Okay, now let's get the water out of his stomach. And then we'll start mouth to mouth. But what happened, David? Uh, lighter gave out, so I had to lie there in the dark, feeling with my hands for the bottle to come through. Suddenly, I... I felt it, but it, it, it slipped out of my hands and I fell in the water, 
grabbing at the rope. So that must have been the tug I felt. I don't know. I, I lost the rope and I was floundering when suddenly the water began to literally boil all around me. The water spout. Yeah. It lifted me half out of the water and flung me against the arch. And, oh, I guess it knocked me out. You've got quite a bruise on your forehead. It's what happened to us, Eve. What do you mean? There's some fault right below there. And every often, you know, enough cold water hits the molten lava way down. And, well, you're the professor, Dave. What happened? I don't know. I suppose it forms a steam explosion that blows a whole column of water back up into the small cavern in part of the tunnel. It creates, yeah, sort of a whirlpool that's momentarily strong enough to hit the normal current like a riptide and drive it back. <laughs> Best I can do. I can do better than that. It's the thing that wants to help us. It saved three of our lives already. Uh, I owe at least part of my thanks to Barbara. And me to Hank. And if it hadn't been for David, I'd have ended up a raving maniac in the dark. I guess we all have turned up a little short, one way or another. Except Hank. I'll say one thing. There's only one best man in the group. It's only at your wedding, mister. Because... Well, Hank is about to exhibit his private white feather. What do you mean, Hank? Well, if we're going forward, there are only two ways to go. Eve and I have looked at the other end of the river here where it comes in, and there's no way out there. How about the cleft up there where the light comes from? Well, looks to be the best bet, only... Davy, old man, that's 60 or 70 feet up there. And I want to tell you, heights turn my belly to water. Even that first 20-foot climb we made, I'd like to die. I, I didn't dare look down after we got there. So what do we do now? We climb. Just let me look it over. No, shouldn't be too tough. Are you sure you're up to this, darling? Eva, I may be an egghead, no muscle boy, and I can't swim. But one thing I do know how to do is climb mountains. This one's my baby. Now, just let me go over a few points once again. I lead, he follows, Barb, and then Hank. Ooh, what if I fall? You're on a fling. The rest of us can hold you, and if you don't lose your head, try to relax. And if you swing back to the wall, grab hold again. <laughs> but you're not going to fall. Yeah, but... Okay, but isn't a tough climb. The main thing is, don't look down. Right. Just keep your eyes up. And each one follow whatever toe holds or hand holds the one before is used. I'll test each one of them first. Most of the climb we can follow ledges. If they feel now, face the wall and move sideways. Don't look down. And no hurry. Don't anyone try to play hero. If you're tired, let me know and we'll rest, okay? I'm not worried, darling. I trust you, Dave. Well, if we don't get started, I may never move. Here we go. Anyone want to take a rest? No. Oh, I'm all right. Let's just keep going. I'm afraid to stop. Next part's going to be a little tougher. Hang in and keep your eyes up. James! James! Hold on, anyone. What is it, Hank? Dave, I can't! I can't! My knees! It's so far Hank. down! I... Hank, damn it! Look up here at me! Now that's better. Now you listen. We only have about 15 more feet to go. There's a nice wide ledge we can settle on while I explore the cleft we're heading for. You lose your head, you can take all of us with you. Just cut me loose and let me... Don't be a fool, me here. Hank. We're a few feet from getting back in the world. Come on, don't let us all down. All right, I'll try. Just hook your weight forward over the ledge. I can't. I'm stuck. Now, when I pull, get your knee up. It's there. All right. Now slide yourself back against the rock. There, that's it. I have to get out of this. I'm moving to Kansas, where it's as flat as a pancake. What are you doing? I'm tying the rope. I need it. It was off. But nothing, wasn't it, darling? What do you mean? That place where the light's coming from. 
is behind that big rock in the ceiling. We can't climb up there. It would take a fly. I can get there, darling. How? Oh. I just need some knots in this one lariat. Then you see that spur that sticks out? I toss the noose of the lariat over that. And then I can shinny up the rope and over on top of the rock. But you'd swing like a pendulum. If I took off from here without any break. But I'll tie the other rope to this one for a trip line. And the rest of you can let me swing over slowly. And steady me as I climb. But how do we get across there to join you? See that other spur higher up between us and the rock I'm going for? Yes. After I get across, I'll sling a line over that and secure it my end. You can all swing across. Oh. Like we used to do when we were kids and played oh. Tarzan. It's only about ten feet. I don't think I could do it. You've got to, darling. It's the only chance we have left. Oh. Thank heaven. <laughs> I never thought he'd make it. Did you find the rift? Yes. Does it lead outside? Eventually. It's a sort of long chimney. Could we climb it? Yes, if we were gremlins. It's wide enough all right one way, but the other is not over six or seven inches. None of us could get through. Oh, no. Well, that blows it. But what can we do, David? There's nothing to do except lie down again. Not me. I haven't the guts. I don't think I have the strength. You have a mutiny on your hands, Captain. I couldn't make that climb down again either. Okay. We'll do what I told you before. Swing all of you over here. There's plenty of room for all of us. Ah, I got you, Eve. Back on good old terra firma. It's just like riding down an elevator. Oh, thanks, Hank. Oh, so we all got down easy. How did David? He's he got away. He sort of takes a hitch around himself and he lowers himself down. But here he comes. Oh, man, oh, man. That's some kind of guy you're marrying. Everybody all right? We are. A few rope burns, that's all. Sorry I put you through all that for nothing. I wasn't much help. But it was worth a last chance. You have to harp on it. I'm not giving up yet. What else is there to try, darling? Faith. Trust in God. I don't think he'd have put us through all this much and not plan to save us. He certainly tried to see what we were made of. Yes, and look at us. We all came through, and none of us is whimpering anymore or thinking of himself. I still think there's something there. Oh, maybe not a childhood picture of a... a thing. Oh, oh good Lord. What is coming out of that other tunnel? It's hard to see in this murky light. But it's the thing. I knew all along he didn't mean us harm. It's the thing. I reckon I must have thrown quite a scare into you folks. Jim Trimble here, Deep Sea Diving and Ocean Bed Recovery Incorporated, ex-frogman in the Navy. You got a mess of folks mighty worried about you on the outside. There's going to be some relief once my boys bring in scuba tanks and gear to get you to the outside there. Just uh, let me give them a go-ahead. Hello, Grace, too. This is Jim. All four missing persons alive and well. Proceed with plan as outline. But how, how did you find us? Well, sir, my daddy was quite a diver in his day. Free diving, that was, not with gear like today. And he always had a notion they was a back way into Choctaw Cave through the underground river. And he found it one day off Chiptaw Lake here, and I was about 16, and, well, he went down and he never came back. I wonder if he ever made it to the cave. Oh, no doubt about that, ma'am. After I got out of the Navy, I went down myself with scuba gear and a motor outfit just like now. And I found my daddy, or his skeleton. I figure he got down just holding his breath, but uh, trying to make it up again at that angle, the current was just too strong. And after it got him, it brought him back to rest here, you know. I, I brung him out and buried him proper. I'm sorry, Jim. No need. He died doing what he wanted to do. But 
How did you find us? Well, Hank's old horse, Baldy, was smart enough to outstep that landslide, and when he turned up downhill, folks got alerted, but uh, there wasn't a hope of digging you out, and they sent for me, and I got flown in from San Diego, and that's how I come to scare you into thinking I was that old legend I guess my father started <laughs> But the thing. It isn't a legend, Jim. Your father never really died. He was the one that saved us. Deep in the Choctaw Caves, the fountains of hot water still spout. The vortexes swirl. The long double lariat still hangs swinging from that high spur. But no living creature will ever enter them again. For even the bats are gone. Smothered in the first two caverns where air forever was shut off. Perhaps all that is left is one thing. With a small T now. For it has become the pleasant ghost of a simple, kindly man. I'll be back shortly. ending. And let's write the epitaph to this tale of suspense in Milton's words. Hence, loathed melancholy of Cerebrus and blackest midnight born in Stygian cave forlorn. For myself, I equate cave with a Latin word spelled the same way, C-A-V-E, but pronounced cave. It means beware our cast included Marion Seldes, Terry Keene, Michael Wager, Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>